Oh, and when we saw them take off, we weren't sure if they were gonna clear the trees. We, I, like literally, I had in my head, we need to call 911. 747 pilot trying to fly my little airplane and I was scared, thought they were gonna die. Here's the story. As you know, I put my Sierra up for sale, the one that we had the engine that we had to put on it. Brand new engine, I bought it with the package of the other ones. We installed the engine, got it running. We did have a, you know, a couple of birthing issues with it. Got those figured out, then we put it up for sale. Frankly, I probably could have sold it about 10 times now if I would just respond to emails. By the way, if you do send me an email, I see them, but I don't get a chance to respond to them all. So please continue to send me emails. Eventually, I'll be able to reply back to them. Put this airplane up for sale, take all the pictures, you know, do that kind of thing. It's the same thing as selling a car on that end of things. Bittersweet day, sad day and a happy day all at the same time. It looks like this is gonna be going to its new home, which is exciting because we know it will be flying. It's gonna to go to a young guy, getting his license, doing all of his training, that kind of thing. And this is a great airplane for it. So I'm excited for them. Well, go to sell it. This guy's like, yep, I wanna buy it. It's a perfect training airplane. My son just got his license. I've been a, you know, a big 747 captain pilot for the last like 20 years and stuff like that. So this will be great. This is gonna be perfect. I'm like, sweet, okay, this is the right family. It's going to the right cause. They're gonna fly it a lot. Go through, gets inspected, passes with flying colors because it's all brand new and it just went through a crap load of work, as you guys know. 25, 50, 60, 70, 80, 6, 10, 30, 40. Gosh, this is sandy as can be. Whew. I think it might be this runway is just really sandy. Wow. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. Bam! She worked perfect that time. Should be good to go for this guy. Filled the tanks up, got about five hours of fuel in it to go from here and wherever he's gonna go. I'm gonna miss it if I'm honest with you. It's, it's a pretty nice airplane just to putz around in and cruise around in. And for training, there's none better. And then I'm telling him <clears throat> about some of the quirks of this airplane and especially the airfield that it's parked at at Dr. Phil's place. It's a grass and in Florida, it's really sand with some grass mixed in it. So they suck to fly out of. When you take off, you have to get all the runway you can get. And it's already a pretty short runway as it is. And then you hold the brakes and you just freaking put the power to the wall and you wait for all the stuff to build up and get the full power. And then you let go and you pull back on the stick, you know, the yoke, the steering wheel as hard as you can and let this thing start building speed. And the whole time it's going, because it's sandy, kind of mushy ground, it's true soft field. The whole thing is kind of going around like this and doing this whole thing, and it feels like you got the brakes on, and then eventually it starts building speed and be building speed, and you know, you're pulling back on it to get the plane to come up a little bit. And as soon as it pops off the ground a little bit, you gotta nose it over to keep the plane as close to the ground as you can without actually touching the ground to then build up all your airspeed to then take off. And that's your soft field uh, takeoff. Telling this guy, I'm like, okay, well, first off, there's two of you, it's hot right now, and you got bags. So that's kind of worst case scenario, if I'm honest. And, and he's like, oh, no, I, I got it, I got it. I'm, you know, 747 captain, I've been doing it forever. He's been, you know, just got his license, so he's fresh, he knows the GA stuff. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right. You, 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 you go for it, man. And we see them do their run up, turn up, you know, they pull out. And then, I mean, the moment that the RPMs went up, it started rolling forward. And I'm like, oh crap. They're never gonna get enough speed to be able to get this thing off of the ground in time before they have to clear the trees at the end of the runway before they crash into the trees. Well, he starts going and then you know, you see him kind of moving. He's moving slow because it's sandy grass kind of thing. And he doesn't even make it halfway down through the middle of the, the runway. And I hear the power come all the way back. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, praise the Lord. He, he stopped. 
And then he came back and he was like, something's wrong with the airplane. This thing is, you know, something's going on with it. It's not building, making power and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they pull it in and I'm like, no, because I just flew the airplane that morning or like the day before. And I'm like, everything is fine, it's working. And they were talking about trying to check this and do this and check all that. I'm like, well, stop. Let me get in the airplane. Let me see what's going on. So I got in the airplane and I, you know, started up good, everything's running good. I run it over, do some run-ups to make sure nothing's kind of funky or changed since the day before. Everything seemed to be working fine. So I run it up. It gets the RPMs and then I wait for them to build all the way up and then I have my you know flap set for short filled, pull back, wham, speed's going up, everything's going up, whoop, and I take off and I do a lap in the pattern, come back and land it, and I'm and I'm trying to tell the guy this airplane is a lot different than a 747. It's a whole different world. You cannot like be driving a Tesla and then hop in a Model T. It's a way different thing. That the 747 is the Tesla. I mean, it's got all this automation. It's got all these things. It's got freaking crazy amounts of power. You know, all this, you're taking off from a paved runway that's like a million miles long. You have a lot of very, very strict procedures on that kind of stuff. On the GA side of things, it's really old school. You have to understand mechanical stuff. It's all manually adjusted. Your mixture, think about this for a second. When you're driving your car, when was the last time you had to adjust your mixture? Never, right? Like even a choke on a car. How many hundreds of years ago was that? So anyways, airplane is really old stuff. It's old technology. And if you haven't done it for a long time, there's a, you, you gotta get some familiarization with it. I was like, hey look, there's an airport that's just like five minutes from here. It's got a big paved runway. How about I just fly the airplane over there and you guys can take off from there so you don't have any issues like you did here. And he said, great, flew out of there, no problems. Flew all the way over, landed, taxied, parked. It was awesome. They're, they're all excited. By this time, it's like three or four o'clock. I think it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And in Florida in August, that is just the worst time. So, you know, the rule of thumb in Florida is you fly somewhere between sunrise and you're done with that airplane by two o'clock in the afternoon. Two o'clock is like the last time of the day you wanna be flying until 10 o'clock at night because that whole window is nothing but thunderstorms, rough air, unstable air, and it's miserably hot. So at three o'clock in the afternoon, they were like, yeah, we gotta make it, we gotta go, we got about a, I think they only had like a three hour flight. So it wasn't even that far that they had to go. So we got the fuel tanks are all topped off. Everything's working. This thing is money, right? They get in it. They, we, you know, hear them do their run up and stuff like that. And we're like, okay, that's taking a little while. And then I'm sitting in the FBO, which is like the office type building for the runway where you land and you come in and that's where they have the front desk where you, you know, pay for your fuel and stuff like that. So we're sitting in there, there's like four of us and we see the airplane, you know, coming through and they're not off of the ground by the halfway point. And we're like, what the heck is going on? And we, we all kind of just look out, you know, start our, everybody's heads starting to look out down the runway. We're like, are they, are they boarding takeoff or what's going on? Well, they start to get airborne, but they're only getting airborne like a little bit at a time. And we're like, holy crap, they actually, they're, they're going for it. They were not high off of the ground at all. And then a, eventually you know we start to see them getting a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and then they finally got up you know they missed the trees thank the lord they i was we were not sure if they were gonna go into those trees or not and so we're like whew, that was sketchy honestly really not sure what happened i don't know why they didn't abort the takeoff if they weren't off of the ground by then or making the airspeed they had to or i i don't know what happened anyway I thought the, uh, you know, the deal was done. I had the money in my bank account. The paperwork was signed. Everything was done. Well, I saw them turn north and I'm like, great. They're on their way, on their way headed home. So I chatted with the guys a little bit there in the, in the office and I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna head home now cause it's hot and you know, I got a video to make for you guys. Oh, speaking of that, new Jimmy's World merch. Boom, check that out. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. 
and you guys are gonna get the chance to buy a lot of this merch coming up very, very, very soon in our brand new awesome website. More information coming out about that, maybe even the next video or two. I digress. And I was putting gas in my car uh, and then I get a text from one of the guys at the airport and, he's, it, and it just says they're back. And I'm like, what? What do you mean they're back? So I'm like, oh, crap. Get back in the car, turn around, come back to the airport. As you can imagine, he's not real happy right now. He, you know, he's kind of shook a little bit and he's he's pretty upset. So I'm like, what's going on? What what happened? What? Why are you here? And he's like, you know, the power, the plane was losing power, and there's something wrong. Something's broken with the airplane, and you know, it wasn't you know going up, and it was losing power, and you know, we almost hit the trees, and and then he 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 mentioned something that I was a, a little bit confused by, if I'm honest. He went out there, he said he did a full run up, and it wasn't making the RPMs, it wasn't doing you know going all the way up. And at that point, I'm like, well, number one, why didn't you just come back? This is what I was thinking in my head. I didn't actually tell this guy this, and I don't think he watches the videos, or if he does now, he probably won't ever watch another one. Uh, but in my head, I was thinking, why, why didn't you just not take off? I don't know. I think get home itis. It was already late in the day. There's a lot of reasons we just want to push and just go for it. Well, <clears throat> not so. Don't do it. That's how people get killed. So, anyways, they just went ahead and decided, okay, maybe it'll fix itself. And he started rolling down the runway. Well, he said it even while they were rolling down the runway, it still wasn't building the RPMs up and stuff like this. But they just freaking went for it. And honestly, it, it really did this close to ending very, very badly. Yeah, it, it was scary. Um, he said he was, you know, the deal's off, he's out, something's wrong with that airplane, he doesn't like it, which, you know, I'm like, yeah, I get it, if I was in your shoes, I, I would die, no. So I'm like, fine, wrote him a check, gave him his money back, and they found a flight to, to get back home. Well, the last thing in the world I would ever want is for somebody to get hurt, especially in one of the airplanes that we did some work on. You know, we, tr we have to do everything exactly correct according to all the regulations and the rules and all that stuff. And so we have zero room for error, especially when it comes to selling one of these airplanes that we did some work on. So even 10 years from now, if we do one of these projects and then it goes to another home and they're flying it, something happens and somebody gets hurt or even worse, it's going to be, that's a Jimmy's World airplane. And that is, that's easily my, my biggest fear is that one of these airplanes that, you know, come through the shop on the show end up in some sort of incident or accident or something. And that's, that's the one thing that keeps me up every single night, every time we do one of these airplanes. And frankly, that's one of the reasons why I drag my feet on selling these is because I want to make sure it is perfect and that the other person, whoever buys these airplanes, they know exactly every tiny, teeny, tiny thing about that airplane so that they know what its history is, what everything is, so that we can mitigate any potential risk of something happening in the future. Because I mean, let's face it, a lot of these airplanes are old airplanes. I mean, the T-6 is literally a World War II built in 1947, I think. So the thing's like 75, how old is that? 80 years old or something like that. They're really old. And it's not like a car where if it dies or you know you get a flat tire, the transmission goes out, you just, oh bummer, I'm stuck on the side of the road. No, you're falling out of the sky at 150, 200 miles an hour. It did a little, little bit different. Figured out, you know, we, we decided just to be on the safe side, let's pull this propeller off. We sent it to the shop and sure enough, they found some sludge inside there. They flushed it out, got it dialed in and you know, it's working absolutely perfect now. There's not a squawk on this airplane. Every single tiny thing is working the way it should be. And then now there's another uh, person that has put it under contract to buy it and so I'm <laughs> I'm like okay who's flying it how much training 
and you have to go with me for at least three takeoff and landings before you're allowed to take this airplane and fly it because I don't want a repeat of what just happened. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. It's under contract. They should be closing on it anytime now. We'll just see how this goes. So I mean, hey, when you're selling an airplane, what could possibly go wrong?